for me that you love science. So my hypothesis is supported. Everybody loves science. You would have a hard time finding someone who doesn't see the value of science in their life. Penicillin, the automobile, the rubber in your sneakers, the chemistry in your toothpaste, the physics in your mattress springs. Wake up, roll out of bed, and science, science, science. <laughs> until you fall asleep at night. And if you don't believe me, I don't know, tweet about it? <laughs> your cell phone? <laughs> so the talk's over, right? <laughs> well, well, how do all these people who just love science, genuinely love science, know what to believe? You can go on the internet and find things that sure look like science to support pretty much anything you want to say. People who hold beliefs contrary to what science tells us is true about the world aren't bad people. They're not stupid. They're just wrong. <laughs> Being wrong isn't the worst thing in the world. I'm wrong pretty often. I get excited to find out that I'm wrong because it means there's something new for me to learn. But when you're, really, when you're wrong and you're making decisions about your own life or other people's lives, being wrong can be dangerous. Go to a practitioner of so-called alternative medicine instead of a real physician, and you might avoid or delay a potentially life-saving treatment. Refuse to vaccinate your children, and you could be exposing them to preventable and deadly diseases like measles or whooping cough. Make decisions about environmental policy not based on the best available information, and you could be reducing the long-term habitability of this planet. Science isn't a set of facts. We'll never be able to publish a book, everything there is to know, according to science. <laughs> science is a technique, it's a technology, it's a tool. It's making our beliefs proportionate to the available evidence. It's an intellectual engine that helps us be less wrong. The practice of science has a moral balance. We can choose to use science in service of humanistic values like health, biodiversity, a more just society, and increased human agency and freedom. Now, scientific institutions and scientists have not always acted rightly or justly or kindly because they are imperfect institutions and people. But we can choose to use science in service of humanity. Ignoring science is always worse than not ignoring science. We can never make perfect decisions all of the time. But we can make best possible decisions given the information we have available to us. Recognize we are at a moment of crisis. Movements dedicated to perpetuating convincing but wrong ideas about scientific topics have begun to gain in prominence, notoriety, and influence. <coughs> Climate change deniers have been appointed positions of influence in federal government agencies that set climate policy. Environmentalist movement is suffused with fabricated anti-GMO rhetoric. If you go on the internet and Google your symptoms, you're as likely to be sent to an acupuncturist as to a real treatment. If you listen to celebrities, you'll hear anti-vaccination talking points. Twitter follower count is starting to plan real metrics of expertise. Ignorance is being weaponized and denial is being institutionalized. Therefore, it is important that we begin to distinguish between what we want to be true, what we think is true, and what has actually been tested. Belief in Bigfoot might be harmless, but declaring anything you want to be medicine to be medicine is not. We still live in a society that values science. <laughs> when we list our values, justice, honesty, hard work, Sound science needs to be on that list. That's not something that's going to happen on its own. It's not going to be imposed by pre-existing institutions. It's something I'm asking of all of us. Become passionate advocates for science. To do that, you need two things. Passion and science. <laughs> it's in the name. <laughs> passionate arguments are just more convincing. The vaccine denialist says children are at risk. Wow, what a persuasive argument. You instantly want to do everything you can in your power to help. But they're wrong. The data show that they're wrong. 
Even the studies commissioned by vaccine denialists show that they're wrong again and again and again and again. They could not be any wronger if their names were Wrongy W. Wrongenstein. <laughs> but data are boring. If I start talking to you about the R-squared value of a regression to a four-parameter logistic equation, what most people probably hear is nerd, nerdy, nerd, nerd, nerd. Scientists need to be more passionate when presenting our arguments. I can make the same passionate argument. If you refuse to vaccinate your children, you are putting your own children's lives and other people's children's lives at risk, and everyone in this room is morally responsible to do whatever they can to prevent that. But not everyone is a scientist with training and a PhD in super sexy scientific glasses. <laughs> so passion, so, so, so activism is already about passion, but it's easy to be wrong. Even if you love science, you might not be steeped in the minutia of the data, what it means, how to analyze it, how to interpret it. Even scientists outside of our own fields might not be able to interpret data from another field. So if I want to be a advocate for science. How do I learn everything there is to know about vaccines, climate change, agricultural, biotechnology, physics, physics, oceanography, physiology, mathematics, sociology, etc.? I don't have to. I just need to know enough. I need to know enough to be a critical thinker about who to believe and why. It's not a matter of trusting a person. It's a matter of understanding a process. I know that scientists aren't necessarily good people. Or, or bad people, they're people people. But I know the feeling of curiosity that drives scientists to get up in the morning before the sun is out and go to a lab in a windowless basement and come home when the sun is down at night. I know what it's like to yearn, to know more, to understand more, to learn more about how the world works. I know the painstaking detail that goes into every sentence of every paper, the tweaking of figure elements, single pixels to the left or right, repeating experiments again and again and again because I forgot a controller made a pipetting error, or it was 21 degrees Celsius yesterday and it's 23 degrees Celsius today. And I know that when a scientist tells me that the Earth is getting warmer and human beings are at fault, that is because they made their best effort with the best available tools and knowledge, and they're almost certainly right. I'm not asking you to get to know scientists personally. I'm begging you to. We're your neighbors. <laughs> Find your personal entry point. Pick up a biography of Rosalind Franklin. Go for a walk and learn about the life cycle of a maple tree. Unanswered questions about how our world are more common than you would think. Why do we sleep? Why do we dream? Why do birds have glycogen bodies? Those little round balls on oak trees, they're called galls, and wasps get the trees to make them, but no one knows how. How do butterflies know where to go? Is there life on other planets in our solar system? Find a question that excites you and read about how other people have tried to solve it and then try to solve it. Science is a tool of empowerment. Anyone can ask questions. Anyone can get answers back from reality. Anyone can make their beliefs proportionate to the evidence. And that can only be taken away from you if your curiosity dies. And once you know that feeling of curiosity and you know you have the power to ask questions of reality and get answers back and through doing so make the world a more prosperous, more fair, better place, once you feel that excitement and that passion and once you have fallen in love and you understand that all of science is driven by passion, listen to what scientists have to say. It won't always be the same thing. Sometimes we disagree and that is wonderful. But when almost every scientist in a field is telling you the same thing, Listen, help them spread that message. The earth is getting warmer. Human beings are at fault. GMOs are safe and can help secure our food supply. Vaccines are safe and can help prevent diseases. Evolution, it's a thing. <laughs> Be skeptical, ask your own questions, but understand why and how scientists reach conclusions. Use your hands, use your mind. Make the world a better place. Thank you.